Royal Caribbean's new main dining room menus are here and our team had a chance to try it out. Here's what they thought up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and if you haven't heard, Royal Caribbean rolled out its new main dining room menus, beginning with Symphony of the Seas, and every week here in January, Royal Caribbean is deploying it to even more ships, and this change is the first update of the main dining room menus in a number of years, and we sent a team onto Symphony of the Seas to check it out, because I know each and every one of you want to know what it's like, what the experience has changed about it, and what to expect when you go on board. So we're going to go day by day to show you some of the food and the menus from the new main dining room menu and talk about the experience as well as how long dinner took. Because after all, one of the major goals of this new main dining room menu is for a shorter meal service. So that way you can get in and out with a little more predictability. Royal Caribbean thinks that dinner should be around 75 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes. Everyone to look at it. Same difference, right? Prior to the new menus, passengers could be in the dining room for as much as 95 or 120 minutes for dinner. So not only did our team look at the new menus and what's there, we also timed the meals. And the way that it worked is we started timing when the menus were presented at the beginning of the meal and then stopped timing when dessert was served. The reason why we didn't keep going after dessert is served is because at that point, there's too much ambiguity as to when the meal could end. When the waiters bring you your desserts, that's essentially the end of the service. Something else beyond that that's required by the server is all up to you. You can sit there and take one bite and leave. You can sit there and eat your entire dessert. You can sit there and chat for, you know, 20 minutes. In short, it's too hard to measure that because everyone's different, right? So what I wanted to do was focus on the things the waiters are bringing to you and you're dependent on them for. And when the dessert is served, that's essentially the end of the meal. And it's up to you when you want to leave at that point. Let's start with day number one, the welcome aboard menu. The first night of the meal, our team actually dined by themselves. Elizabeth was solo on this cruise and ate at the 8 o'clock traditional seating time on deck three and received the menu at 8.01 p.m. Now, this theme is welcome aboard, and it's really American cuisine. Appetizers were served at 8.27, followed the entree at 8.48, and finally dessert at 9.14. So in total, it lasted an hour and 13 minutes. Day two was French night, and in this case, actually, Elizabeth made some friends and started eating with a different family at early seating and dinner. Luckily, Royal Caribbean was able to accommodate her. This is actually one of my favorite tips is, you know, if the seating arrangement you have for dinner doesn't work for you, speak to the head waiter about changing your arrangements. And in this case, she was able to join a family at the 5.30 early traditional seating on deck five. And of course, being night two, the French night was also formal night on the sailing. Dinner took a little over 75 minutes as the menus were given out at 5.48 p.m. and they received dessert at 7.12. So in total, it was an hour and 24 minutes for dinner on day two. Day three was Italian night. And on day three, they went from six to four people at their table. A couple people didn't show up for dinner. And as a result of that, the speed of the service felt really quite quick. In fact, Elizabeth used the word unbelievable because all three courses were served within one hour and eight minutes. Dinner menus came at 526, appetizers at 544, entrees at 558, and desserts at 634. Elizabeth also noted that everyone got a good laugh about the fact that the dinner theme was Italian, and it also happened to coincide with White Knight for the evening theme on board the ship. What could possibly go wrong with spaghetti sauce and a white apparel? Dinner time for day number three was one hour and eight minutes. Moving on to day number four, Caribbean night table was once again filled with six people for this particular dinner, and this was the first night where Elizabeth really said that she saw that the revamped menus had really changed things because the only entree she recognized from this menu was the New York strip steak. Everything else seemed new and different to her. Compared to the previous three nights, the main dining room was also pretty empty. So the dinner in the Caribbean night took exactly one hour and 25 minutes from receiving the menus being presented with dessert. They were seated at 539 and desserts arrived at 703. So an hour and 25 minutes for day four. Day five is Mexican night. And by this point, Elizabeth thought that 95 minutes was the staff's goal, as this was the third night on the sailing in which she finished their dinner around the same time. The dining party received menus at 5.30 p.m., and dessert came out at 6.54 for a total of one hour and 24 minutes waiting on food. Night six was Royal Night, and naturally, this is also known as Lobster Night, and it was definitely was the most crowded because a lot of people were definitely looking forward to that complimentary lobster. Four out of the six people ordered it as one of their entrees, and they all looked to be roughly about 1 to 1.25 pounds each. However, since each additional lobster tail now costs $16.99 each, this is one of the big changes Royal Caribbean made with the new menus, nobody ordered a second to see how it compared to the complimentary tail. 
Nearly everybody ordered two appetizers, two entrees, and two desserts. So they expected dinner to take longer than the nights, but they were served in one hour and 39 minutes. The last night of the cruise was Mediterranean night. And on the last night, Elizabeth dined by herself and was in and out in just, believe it or not, 38 minutes. However, out of all seven nights, she thinks that Mediterranean dinner was her least favorite of them all. And of course, this is obviously an outlier. 38 minutes, I think, by all accounts, is definitely an incredibly fast dinner. It was the last night of the cruise. You know, a lot of people kind of getting ready, so maybe they were a little less busy there. So in total, in combining all those times from the seven nights of the cruise, the average dinner time was a little over 75 minutes. That dining time is exactly what Royal Caribbean wanted. When Michael Bailey, Royal Caribbean's president and CEO, talked about the new dinner menus right at the end of 2022, he cited that a lot of guests often complain about the length of their dinner meal. So one of the primary reasons for the change was the swiftness in service, and it seems like 75 minutes is exactly what Royal Caribbean is going for. I also wanted to get Elizabeth's thoughts on the best food that she ate on there, and she ate plenty of food in the main dining room. Her mission was to eat in the main dining room every night of the cruise, and here are her top three. Number one was the warm chocolate chip cookie. The best thing she had was the warm chocolate chip cookie on Mexican night. It was something that the head waiter recommended, and she tried it. It had a deep dish cookie served in a piping hot ramekin and topped with vanilla ice cream, and it never became too soft, even with the melting ice cream on top. She loved it. Number two was the roasted poblano pepper soup. Two of her favorite dishes were served on Mexican night, and what she enjoyed the most about this was the spicy kick the soup had. The only thing that could have made it better was including more of the roasted corn, red peppers, and sautéed chorizo. And number three was the crispy coconut jumbo shrimp. On Caribbean night, the chef's recommendation for the appetizer was the coconut shrimp. And the shrimps were indeed crunchy, but they had a subtle hint of coconut, and the sweet chili dipping sauce really made this stand out. All right, so how does the main dining room menu compare to the previous experiences? Because that's the heart of this, right? What do we think about this change? And Elizabeth said that growing up, you know, she had always gone to the main dining room as kind of a staple of the cruise experience, something that she certainly has a lot of experience with. But speed never really mattered to her because you'd always tell the wait staff if you wanted a quicker dinner service because of a reservation for a show or whatever reason, right? And she certainly remembers being times in which you were able to get a family four in and out in about an hour. In terms of food quality, Elizabeth thought that it seemed close to what it was in the past. About a quarter of her dishes did come out cold, though, even though Royal Caribbean said the new menu was going to ensure hotter food. But that was something that would happen with the old menu anyway, just kind of the realities of it, I guess. In terms of the classics menu being removed, which was in the old menu, a standby option in which it never changed every day of the cruise. There was a subset of options that were always the same. She could understand why someone who was a picky eater might have a problem with that particular change. After all, her sister was a picky eater and getting the roasted chicken breast was her favorite thing to do. So if you are a very, very picky eater, obviously the lack of a classics option might be a problem. But for her, who enjoys stepping out of her comfort zone and trying new things, she absolutely loved the idea of a new menu with new options out there. And she also knows that, and this is true of anybody out there, right? That if you order an entree and it ends up not liking it, you can always order something else. As we talked about before, the only night that she really didn't love the new menu was Mediterranean night. And if she wasn't in a rush to go pack, she probably would have ordered the grilled Mediterranean steak as the vegetable moussaka was just not really up to her standards. But as with anything new, she thought there would be some trial and error to the kitchen staff. But overall, she says she was impressed with the new menus and looking forward to seeing how the dining experiences stack up on future sailings. Another change that actually happened during the cruise, believe it or not, was the reformatting of the menu. Yeah, on the first day of the cruise, we got some of the menus and they had the regular menu selection, starters, main courses, and desserts. And then they had at the top chef's recommendations, but the chef's recommendations did not double up later on in the menu. Meaning if you miss out on the chef's recommendation because you overlooked it, you wouldn't know about those options. Anyway, Royal Caribbean made a change about... I don't know, day two or day three of the cruise. And then the chef's recommendations were included down in the menu. So by night three, the change was made. And Elizabeth thought that making this change was a really big improvement because placing all the available options in one place is more convenient for the reader who is most likely to be hungry and trying to figure out what they want to eat quickly. Now, let's talk about that lobster tail change because in the past, you could go on lobster night on your cruise, which would always be the second formal night and have as many as you want. With the new menus, Royal Caribbean is limiting guests to just one lobster tail for no additional cost on the evening that it's available. If you want an additional one, it's going to cost you $16.99 plus 18% gratuity. Something else you should be aware of is there is a separate kids menu on this cruise. And with the new menus, the kids menu has five entrees that are offered nightly. And this kids menu does not change during the week. You can choose between a hamburger, chicken fingers, grilled cheese, spaghetti marinara, and mac and cheese. Additionally, they also offer fruit salad, 
veggie sticks, and a French fries as a side. Keep in mind, by the way, you as an adult can order off the kids' menu, and kids can order off the adult menu. So there's no restriction. If you're just in the mood for a grilled cheese, you can order that as well. Now let's move on to special requests. Traditionally, Royal Caribbean has been really great at accommodating specific food allergies and dietary requirements. On the new menus, the vegan dishes are indicated via a small leaf icon. And there's at least one vegan dish for each course, including vegan spaghetti bolognese and stuffed grilled eggplant. On Elizabeth's Symphony of the Sea Sailing, however, there was not a separate menu that was provided upon request. So basically, Royal Caribbean has taken the old separate vegan menu and the, well, I guess, old dining room menus and combined them into one here. Now, for those who are watching the sugar intake, Royal Caribbean also offers at least one sugar-free dessert each evening, such as crumbly oat and berry bar or a warm blueberry cobbler. Now, of course, if you have special dietary needs, you can always email Royal Caribbean your special needs by emailing us to special underscore needs at rccl.com at least 45 days prior to sailing or 90 days for any European or Asian itineraries. Be sure to include everybody's names on the reservation, the booking number, ship name, and sail date. So there you have it, our first look at the new menus and how it kind of works out there. Personally, I'm impressed by the service speed. 75 minutes is a great amount of time. I think that, you know, an hour to about an hour and a half is that sweet spot of long enough for it to feel like a meal. You're not in the windjammer for, you know, 20 minutes, but not long enough that you're like, are we still here at dinner? Where's our entrees kind of situation? I think they've really hit a good thing with that. And I'm looking forward to trying it out myself. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Elizabeth's experience on Symphony of the Seas and what stands out to you about the new changes with the Royal Caribbean's main dining room menus. I'm looking forward to seeing your comments down there below. Please keep it civil. And also, while you're down there, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on your notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. We'll talk again real soon.